So welcome to Hot Sound Podcast. Today is May 2nd, 2024. Welcome everybody. And um, the topic for this evening is resources. So the the background picture is on this this side. Okay. This side is the, the water lily, and this side is the cactus um, rose. So I just want to the the meaning behind this um kind of background is that water lily it actually comes out of water. So the 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 background of water lily um the flower the background of that flower is there's a lot of water, whereas the cactus rose um because it's part of the cacti family, so it can survive with very little water. And I just actually just want to visually demonstrate that, yes, they are both beautiful flowers, as far as I'm con concerned. Beautiful flowers. However, they um, their environment is very different. And it is the... Um, it is each of their genius to be able to adapt to their environment. And so our environment actually gives us the resources that we have. And um, depending on what resources we have, we actually can blossom and bloom into very different beings, um, human beings. So some human beings, if they have a lot of, you know, very soft and nurturing environment, they bloom a certain way. But when they come from um, a much more, I would say, um, uh, harsh and less forgiving environment, they would come up with different things. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. It's just that um, who we are is it's really very dependent on the resources that we have. And it, I've already mentioned in previous episodes that we are limitless beings. We, we really are. And the reason why we forgot that we are limitless is because of the environment that we grew up um, with is that we, a lot of the times our parents um, and other people around us, they don't really um, have the belief that they are limitless. So they already have the programming that, you know, they are, they, they only have, they can only do certain things. They, they kind of put themselves in a box. And so when you interact with someone who is um, very rigid in their box, or at the very least, even if they are not rigid, but they, they are very much aware that there is a box, then all they can convey and um, be able to teach us is that, you know, there is a box and we have to work within it. Otherwise, um, you know, all hell break loose. However, the the um, the theme of this evening is how can we tap into the resources that we needed to tap into in order to start to um, break out of those boxes and in order to really realize more of our limitless potential okay so I think I've, I've mentioned to you guys before that I've been um, taking some courses from Richard Bartlett and one of the things and well not Richard Bartlett mentioned that but actually from even from NLP it's Richard Bart Richard Bandler the, the one of the the creators of um uh, neurolinguistic programming is is about um, breaking pattern. When you break a pattern, meaning that you know if if I if I always have a cup of tea in the morning, the first 
first thing in the morning, I would have a cup of tea. And if I have that ritual, then, um, you know, it, it would set up my days in a certain way. However, there are times when, you know, I don't have that cup of tea. My mornings are a little different. Then, like, that's one of the ways to break pattern. And the more you are, um, the more you are, I would say, brave enough to break more and more of your own patterns, then the easier it becomes for you to get access to resources and that you don't get to have access to when you are within the confines of those habits that you have either consciously or unconsciously um, adopted to limit yourself. So <clears throat> what do I mean by that? Um, I just want to give an example. Um, an, an example is um, uh, I remember when I was young, I was just so afraid of the dark. <laughs> Absolutely. When it's dark, it's like, ah, I need my mommy. <laughs> and um, and so, um, and I remember, like, I love, oh, well, I wouldn't say love, but, you know, I, I enjoy the excitement of um, watching the horror movies. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, after I I finished a horror movie, it was like it's at least a couple of nights, if not weeks, that I won't be able to sleep very well because I am afraid of the dark. And when it is dark, then you know all those horror movies themes this comes back. And even um, now, when I am, you know, much later in life, is even when it's dark, it's like a part of me would have this this um thing is like you know whenever there are sounds in the house and i know there's no one else but myself in the house it's like mm, what the heck is going on when things go bump so i would i would you know the self talk is okay there is this thing there's you know yeah there there are these um People from the other side of the veil trying to contact me, you know, blah, 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 all those things. And also, um, now that I, I'm getting more a bit more um, clairvoyant, I can actually sometimes see, you know, shadows. <laughs> I remember one of the, the reason why I moved out of, at one point, um, I was living at my mom's place. Uh, one of the major reasons that I moved out was... Um, at her place is like all these dark shadows. I can just see them moving about. My mom does not see it, but I can see them. I'm like, okay, time to go. <laughs> time to go now. <laughs> so, but now I'm gotten to the point where like when it's dark and I hear uh, a noise, then um, I would have to self-talk is, okay, somebody's trying to get your attention. So, um, in NLP, this is actually a, a strategy. So the strategy is I have to see it's dark because at the when it's daytime, eh, I don't care. I don't have that self-talk. But when it's night and when I'm, especially when I'm um, by myself and especially when um, I hear noises that cannot be explained, then, you know, I will have to self-talk. It's like, okay, this, they are coming, they are here, that kind of you know, self-talk. So that is a strategy in, in NLP terms as a strategy. So I know that that is my strategy. Like I've, I've observed that, okay, this is my strategy. This is how I make myself scared. Uh, that is how I am, um, you know, um, allow myself to lean into the fear so you know usually when it when so the pattern break the pattern break is when it gets to you know i'm 
I would say something to myself that's going to break that pattern. So when I see it's dark and I'm by myself and I hear noise and I would say, I would start to sing a song in my mind. It's like whatever song that, that comes, uh, um, it could be, um, it could be joy to the world or something like that. So instead of you know, having this self-talk is they are here, I would sing something that is going to break that pattern. And when I do something like that, and I do that often enough, it actually starts to, um, it breaks that. That's my own strategy for scaring myself. So getting to the point where even if I can see that there are, you know, shadows, you know, trying to get my attention, because they do come up, I can see them come up to me and, you know, wave and, you know, try to talk to me. I can even hear them. It's like, Okay, I and so I can see all that, but I'm not scared anymore because I know they can't they can't do anything to me. If I am not afraid of them, then there's nothing they can do to me. So for me, that is one of the the ways. Um, one of the for me, it's the best example of how to break a pattern. When you break a pattern, you actually um, breaking um the pattern is you actually um, have a, a different result. So now, doesn't matter whether it's nighttime, doesn't matter whether I'm at home by myself or not, um, it just does not face me anymore. And I remember one time I was actually, it's not one time I was like, um, I was meditating, I was meditating. It was during the daytime. I was, I forgot whether I was by myself or not. But I do know that someone is trying to get my attention. Someone, you know, not from the other side of the veil, trying to get my attention because I could actually hear my, I have, you know, a, um, a stack of paper. I could hear the, the stack of paper flapping. And at that corner of the room where I was doing meditation, there's no chance that there could be any wind that is that is making those paper flapping around. So I do know that, yep, there is something going on. It was like, eh, I don't care. And in in my meditation, I actually um I can see, you know, some the the person trying to get into my meditation. And I actually um the image that I have whenever I see that that face trying to get my attention, I just put the, the intention that I'm going to melt that person or that energy. So after a while, everything got quiet. They understood my, my um, intention is I don't, I'm not scared of them and I don't want to deal with them. So after I did that, they never came back. Nobody ever disturbed me in my meditation. So that is one way of um, really, I would say, um, dealing with my own fear. Because um, when you when you when you get to the point where you don't fear something, it's it's like a superpower. So um, that's one of the ways that you can start to deal with the fear is you figure out your pattern of um, talking yourself into fear. Because I figured out my, my own fear of the dark is it has to be dark and I usually have to be up by myself and I hear something and then I talk to myself. So four parts to to my own strategy and when I observe that I have this strategy and when I just tell myself that you know then then I would start to feel a bit of fear and I interrupt myself that that then you know I could or do all the way up to you know um, step three and then I interrupted the pattern so the result is I don't 
the, um, and the more often you do that, the easier it is to get beyond the fear. So a pattern interrupt. I just give a very um, one example of of um, how to do a pattern interrupt. And um, there's also another pattern interrupt that I want to um, share with all of you. Another one is, I remember I saw a movie, it's Born Ultimatum, I think is the name of the movie. And within the movie, there was this one part where um, it's about, you know, in the, instead of taking pills, continuously taking pills, if you actually um, use a viral infection, it actually locks in all of the learning in the body. It's, it's about this, you know, um, performance enhancing drugs that the, 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 the main character it was not a very bright or um, you know strong person, but when he um, was on the this um, when he was on this these um, performance enhancing drugs, then you know he was he was brilliant. He was really a great super soldier. But somehow um, he has to he he was being hunted. The, the, the people from the program was trying to shut down the program and kill everybody that knows anything about the program. So, so he does not have access to, so his access to the um, performance enhancing drugs is drying up. And so he actually found one of the, the, the researchers that you know, um, was able to develop the, the drugs. But you know, she, the researcher does not have any drugs. However, she has an alternative is to um, use the virus instead of creating the drug is to use the strain of that virus to um, infect him. And once that is the case, then all of the enhancement that he has had so far would be all locked in his body and he does not need to have that drug anymore. So I thought, huh, that's interesting. I like that idea of using a virus um, to, to a viral infection to lock in all the, um, the, the, all the enhancement or all the, 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 the knowledge that you have. And so I remember um, after that, um, every time I have a big aha moment, like really big aha moment that really popped me out of my, um, popped me out of my box, then I would get sick. So I was like, the first time I was like, okay, this is fun. I like it. That means I I actually locked in all of the um, all of my um um you know the 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 breakthrough that I have like like I got it in my body, it's solid. But then after two or three times that I was like you know really ill after a big um aha moment, I was like, okay, this is stupid. I don't like this. I don't like this anymore. It was fun the first time. It was, you know, less fun the second time. But by the third time, it's like, I'm not signed up for this. So I I just, okay, I I just started talking to myself. I can lock in all of my, um, you know, aha moments and all of that enhancement and, without getting ill. So I talk my, to myself, you know, enough. So that every time I have an a, you know, aha moment, I would like even if I I wouldn't wait for the next day. I like at that moment I was like, okay, I don't need to be ill. I can have all of these enhancements and really great understanding out of the box moment without needing to get ill to lock it all in. So I talked to myself, and now I don't have to be ill. Every time I have a big aha moment, because you know the last couple of months has been a lot of big aha moments. So, so I was um there was another way to break my own pattern. 
practice. You know, I signed up for the, that um, pattern of getting ill to lock in all the, the learning. And I, when I decided I've had enough of that, I talked to myself and got rid of that. So this is something that we can all do. And um, the breaking our own pattern, when you break your own pattern, you, because especially if it's something that you, you know, have been doing a long time, if you, like, if everything in your life is, you know, going really well, you don't, like, you want to stay constant, then, you know, yeah, keep going, keep all your habits. However, if you really want to break out of whatever box that you're in, the moment then you have to uh, I no you don't have to but I would suggest one of the ways that you can start to recreate yourself is to let go is to actually break some patterns what patterns to break it's um it's better that you consciously design it because unconsciously we design that to for ourselves as well. You know, every time if you know, what you're doing is not aligned with your your soul, um, your soul would actually give you some illness. And the more out of alignment you are, the the more um, serious the the illness may be. That's why some people um get cancer, and it's because whatever they are doing they're on some level their soul is trying to break them out of that pattern so they give them uh, like a big illness so that like really break the pattern so they have to actually be in bed completely um you know, suffer whatever and um decide whether they are ready to go out on a very different direction or they die so that's that's what our soul does for us. And um, if you want to make big changes, if you feel that it, like you're in a rut and you want to make big changes, it is better actually to consciously choose how to break your own pattern rather than waiting for your your soul to you know rain down fire on you. So. Questions? Can I ask a question? Absolutely. <clears throat> what does it mean consciously design or consciously choose? Um, because um, I don't know. What does it mean consciously do that? Exactly what I say. Consciously choose if you if you like if everything is a, in a rut then you have to do something what and you choose it so one of the ways to choose it is is um for example you sign up for a course that is designed to break you out of the box like I, I mentioned that I went to um, a, a course in, I think it was in Florida, not Miami, Florida. It's called Avatar, which um, is really about breaking out of the box. So I went, like I heard other people who've, who've been that to that course and that's what they 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 told me their experience was. So I know that, okay, I wanted to break myself out of a box at that moment. And so I signed up for their course. And lo and behold, yeah, it the course really did um took me to a different level of getting out of the box. So you know, start doing something that you don't ordinarily do, like signing up for that kind of course. Okay. That's one of that. That's consciously choosing, because I know that I'm in a rut, 
at that point. Like that's um when was that? 2019. I, I knew I was in a rut and I knew I need something to break me out, but I don't know which one. And when I heard about it, then I know, okay, that's the one that I would it do I know whether that's the one or not? I don't know, but that's my intention. And when you have an intention of doing something, most of the time, um, your own unconscious mind will bring the the, um, the solution to you. Did, did I answer your question consciously? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it yeah, you consciously choose. And it does not have to be a course. It could be, um, you know, like if you think you're in a rut, so you may need to move. Could be at, um, something like that. It could be, um, you know, changing career. It could be just as simple as um, changing working environment or, you know, being open to new friends. So it really depends on you. It's very individual. I can't tell you what a, what consciously choosing a um, how to break your own pattern may look like because everyone is different. So you need to, um, um, okay. So the best way is to really have that intention. Okay, I'm in a rut or somehow I'm not, I, I've reached a, a ceiling that I can't seem to go through. And you, and if you really want to go through that ceiling or break that, that barrier, first you commit to, okay, I really want to break that pattern. I really want to break that ceiling, whatever it is that you want to get out of or find a way out of. So have the intention and then just um, ask the universe. So what's the best way? You know, please bring me people, places and ways that I can um, consider in order to get myself out of that rut. So when you Ask the universe, the universe will answer. And then you, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to do everything that the universe brings to you. You have your, you have choice, you have choice. So however you need to make that, um, you have to make that commitment to get out of the rut and ask the universe. And then when the universe brings you different um, um, opportunities, just be serious, consider everyone and really, um, you know, take action. Thank you. Okay. Um, even if you're not in the rut, I would suggest that you break your own patterns because I don't know if you know it, but um, we are going through very, um, I would say not difficult times, but we're going through times that are full of opportunities. This is actually the period of time that we can completely reinvent ourselves if we wish to. I'm not saying that you have to, but if you wish to, then this would be a very good time to um, start to look into ways to break yourself out of the pattern. And um, you like if it really depends on how much you want to invest in it in terms of your time, your money. And um, so even if you have no money at all, you can still invest your time. Because um, when you ask the universe, the universe will give you different opportunities. So, and I'm quite sure 
the universe knows to give you um, different varieties so that there must be some alternatives that will fit your budget. And even if it does not fit your budget, because when I wanted to sign up for that course, I didn't have the money, but I but I have it in my mind that when I have money, I'm going to sign up for that course. And the money came. So it was not a cheap course because I have to be out of the country, out of my home, you know, the ticket. So it's not just paying for the, the, the tuition. I also have to pay for hotels. So it, it was not uh, a very cheap trip. And I didn't have the money for it. But when I put it, Put a note in my mind that okay i want to take that course when i have the money the universe provided the money came and i was able to go have that experience broke myself out of the the pattern and that's what usually happens when you want to when you make a commitment to break yourself out of the prison that you put yourself in, you 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 put that order out in the universe. The universe will come back and support you. Um, you don't have to believe me. You just have to test it out. I, I was gonna Absolutely. ask about this um, belief system. I mean, so many times our beliefs will stop us from doing things. I know. Doesn't that play a role here that you have to suspend your beliefs? Beliefs, um, yes, you have to work on your beliefs. However, um, as I mentioned before, you don't have to completely delete the beliefs for you to get results. You, it's like you don't have to turn 180 degrees in order to get results. Even if you manage to just shift yourself one degree, you already end up somewhere that is different. Mm. So beliefs are constructed in such a way that it's tightly locked it's not easy to change results uh, your beliefs i mean it's not easy i and i i'm still working on a lot of my own beliefs and i totally know that it's not easy however should you be brave enough um to challenge yourself and to you know slowly but surely stretch your own beliefs just a little every day just you know just have to stretch it maybe not even one degree maybe just 0 0.01 degree every day in a year's time it will be very different place and it and once your belief is change you actually completely shifted the pattern and you will end up somewhere that is if not exactly what where you want to be at least closer to where you want to be yeah and one of those beliefs is going to be do i trust myself or do i trust universe to deliver so i guess we we gotta take a leap of faith in a way otherwise you know we're gonna say okay i'm gonna try this but i'm not sure if it's gonna work <laughs> um yeah so that's one of the things i want to talk about is um when you when you really want something you really want to work on that issue i want to work on that issue if you really want to work on that issue and let's say this is the issue if you really want to work on it because you don't like it and you have a big preference to not have this, it will, you actually create 
a resistance yeah. in the universe yeah. so that you know you kind of the more you work on the issue the more resistance you will get yeah so that's why um you can have preference you know yes i want to be healthy absolutely everybody should have that preference but also don't insist on that just insist on okay i want to feel 0.01 percent better than yesterday so don't try to go at something head on you will get resistant like if you try to as I mentioned before, the more you focus on something, the more energy you put on something, the more you build it up. So mm -hmm. the more you build it up, it, it may have started as you know, something minor, but the more you try to get rid of it, the worse it will get. So get to the point where you prefer to have a different outcome. However, you know that, okay, it is what it is right now. And you just make peace with it. Right. So when you, like, of course you have to, you know, um, process some, some emotions to allow you to get to that point of neutrality. But right. um, when you do that though, when you really do that work, it actually makes it, it gives it room to shift. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, another word for the acceptance. If you accept it, then you give it room to be okay, then you can do whatever you need to do and, but the, don't push the release. It's, it's gonna release. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is, accept um, the condition as it is now and process any kind of, you know, emotions that you have attached to it. Because these emotions have accumulated for, you know, long time. So it actually has, um, has a lot of weight in it. Mm -hmm. So when you process the emotions, it actually clears and it's easier for you to um, accept what is. On the mm -hmm. other hand, it does not mean that you agree with what is. You accept that it is what it is today, right in this moment. But it does not mean that it cannot change in the next moment. And then you really set the, the intention that, you know, I accept what it is right now, but I ask the universe to... Um, you know, give the the give the preference or or you know create the preference and teach me how I can create the results that I prefer. Then you know you kind of give the universe um, a much easier way to help you. Right. And the other thing, okay, so that's one. And the other thing is to keep working on your own reality, the, your, your mental reality. Because um, some of the resources that I highly recommend, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, is, you know, there's a movie called The Matrix. It's um, 20, 30 years now. So it's not a new movie, but, you know, it, it is one of those ageless movie. But if you see it today, it's still very relevant. Like The Matrix uh, movie is really tells us that we, we live in a construct. And we live mm -hmm. in a, a simulation. Mm -hmm. And um, so... 
I know right now when I say this, you know, you won't, it's it's not something that you can grasp because you, you don't have the, because uh, you've been living in this reality for such a long time that you think everything is real, but really it's not. It's, it's not, or I should say that it's, um, it's a constructed reality. And once, and because it's a constructed reality, you can deconstruct it. Like if it's a real reality, then there's nothing you can do because it's real, but it's a constructed reality. And if it's constructed, that means you can deconstruct it as well. So this is a constructed reality. And uh, in this constructed reality, there are certain things, there are certain rules. One of the rules is the more you resist, the harder it is to get out of something. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there are rules in this, in this um, reality that when you really know those rules and live those rules, then you can deconstruct it and then you can reconstruct it however you want. Can you make an, ex uh, an example, please? <clears throat> um, okay, for example, <laughs> I remember last, last Sunday, I mentioned that I have some allergies, right? Mm -hmm. I think my, eye, my allergies is... Um, so how do I know I have allergies? My eyes were itching and, um, you know, I was having a runny nose and all that. So, so, like, so for me, the evidence I have that I have an allergy is that, you know, itchy eyes and all those things. And so I was, I was taking um, quercetin to, to help with the, the, the allergies. <clears throat> and so like I was, and then a Sunday night I was in bed I was like okay I've learned all these things I can work on myself I don't have to suffer through this <laughs> so I was like okay let me just you know just quiet down and work on myself because I know I can <laughs> so so I was just doing the things that I mentioned is you know I first I do the um the um, what, what is that the 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 dyslexia mm -hmm. um, yeah protocol so you know right left left right together and scan how many patterns blah 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 so I did that and I tap and then and then I clear that and then I also say okay so allergies what are so I tap in all of the symptoms that I have so I eyes no tap that in you know throat I feel something in my throat tap that in and you know, I have, you know, um, you know, like all, all of the symptoms that, that I have. I just tap everything in and then I say, okay, scan how many patterns? And I blah, 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 scan, scan the patterns and I do the eye movement. <clears throat> and so I and you know, there there are so I did a couple of things and so I did all of that and I went to bed. <laughs> so next morning I was like, okay. My eyes were still a little bit itchy, but as the day went on for Monday, it was like, it was getting better and better. And so I have the quercetin on the table. I was like, okay, if I take the, the quercetin, I'm reinforcing that I still have allergies. So I stopped taking the quercetin. I was like, okay, if whenever I, I feel any symptoms, I'm going to work on myself again. But actually, after working on myself, you know, it, it took maybe, you know, two minutes while I was in, just before I fall asleep, I did that. So, I mean, well, if everything was real, if I actually have this body, could I have done this? No, because it's a body. Like, if I really believe that I am this body, like, how would, you know, scanning and all these tapping in, how is that going to work? No. The only reason this, like, what I've done, you know, scan and all those things is because 
is a constructed reality. And within this constructed reality, when I do these things, it will work. Mm -hmm. So that that for me is an evidence for myself that, you know, this is constructed reality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you have to test these things out. And um can I ask you a question? Um okay, give me one more minute first. Okay, so Sorry. so how do I test it out? Mm -hmm. Um I remember I used to test it out by um doing things that you know. I have no evidence that it's like if there if it, everything were was were real as I think it is it will it will never work. For example, I would like I have to take you know connecting bus bus connecting subway and all that. So I would say okay, I I have it that you know I don't have to wait for a connecting bus. You know whenever I go. It, the connecting bus will be there so even before I leave the house I would say that I would make that I have that mental image so does it mean that I it's going to happen every time hmm. but it happen most of the time more times than is than it is um, that it becomes significantly um like like um, what is this? Statistically significant. It does not have to happen 100% of the time. But mm -hmm. if it happens more often than it is not. And all you did, all, and all I did was just hold that intention in my mind. Then you know there's something else going on. That this is the reality that you think you're living in is not what it is it is something else is is actually happening so test it out for yourself now next time when you go somewhere and you need to take a bus before you leave the house is you know have have an expectation um have a, or i should say have, have an intention of what you want to experience and test it out. I tested it out for parking a spot and it worked for me a few times. Very good at parking. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to need, need a parking <laughs> spot. <laughs> like most of the time I would get get one. Like you most of the time. So not a hundred percent of the time, but most of the time I would exactly. get one. so so if reality was, you know, was actually real, how do you explain that? You can't. Yeah. Well, yeah. Our, our mind creates reality, so which means that... Um, if our mind creates reality, then is reality really what we think it is? Right, it's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sorry, go back to... Tatiana, question, your question. No, sorry, is it? I interrupt you. Um, that technique um, when we scan, can we work with our sabotaging uh, using our body to talk to our body? Uh, like, to, like, like you uh, name all the symptoms of all of your allergy can we name the symptoms what i don't do and uh press and ask for um help from body from the body i mean ask from okay. universe and from the body so let me tell you that everything is a pattern if it works for one kind of pattern it will work for all kinds of pattern. So yes, the, the short answer is yes. But you can't just, you know, you tap it in and then do this and then you have to actually 
So all this tapping in is actually for, um, for you to get in touch with the pattern. So don't just do it. Don't just say something, but actually mean it. Like make it real for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what's the difference when I when I talk? I mean, it's it is real for me, no? Okay. How to? What's the difference between um, real, not real? Um, okay, so you tap all of the symptoms in. That's fine. But when you start to scan for patterns, that's so. When you scan for patterns, you have to actually feel when you need to stop and don't 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 think about it but actually feel okay count 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 you know one pattern two pattern count 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 until you actually feel that you need to stop like even if you get to a hundred you still if you don't have that feeling you still keep counting it could be 200 it could be 300 patterns who knows so that's what I mean by you have to actually make it real. Don't just, you know, do the, a, it's not a procedure. It's um, like, it's not a technique, but it's actually a, a way for you to get in touch with that pattern. And when you get in touch with a pattern, it's like when you observe it, with your consciousness, the pattern will start to shift according to your preference. Understand? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, one more thing. One Let's more thing. Um, like when you talked about the fear, uh, when you when it dark, you afraid. So lately, I got almost the same you know when i go to sleep i need to open window but i'm on the first floor and you know i'm afraid that you know gate would be open and somebody gonna come uh my window right on um you know mm -hmm. uh, on the roof of um uh, garage so I, you know, a few nights I was just suffering this closed window and then I opened the window and I asked my, I was called true self and I asked true self, tell me, am I safe? Can I open the window? <laughs> and if it say me yes, then I open the window. Should I close the window? <laughs> I don't know how to break this fear. Otherwise. Okay. So um I, you can definitely do that is to really feel. Does it feel safe tonight for me to open the window and really feel? Usually a yes for me would be, you know, if I feel my heart opening, then it's a yes. But if I, you know, everything is all closed up, then I won't open the, the window. So if you do that, then be consistent. Like really listen to the body, what the body says. Because everything is already, um, like your body actually knows a lot more than you do. Wow. Especially the the more you you um, approach energy work, you become psychic. Mm. I, I stand up, I put my hands on my heart and I asking if I move forward, it's mean yes. If I move back, it's mean no for me. Okay, if that works for you, then do it. Okay. And the other thing is, um, take some time to release fear. 
So how do you do that? You just, you know, um, put some time, like just set aside some time for you each night is, okay, I want to, I have 10 minutes or 15 minutes then, and I want, and I'm going to work on fear for these 15 minutes. And then you just um, prepare a quiet place for yourself to really feel the fear in your body and let, let it come up. If it's ready to leave, let it leave. Don't insist it. Just, just if fear comes up, you just observe it. So no, no judgment. Just if it, if you have fear, you have fear. So we human beings, it's okay to have fear. Just, just allow it to come up. Allow it to leave if it's ready to leave. And if it's not ready to leave, don't judge it. Don't judge yourself. You know, I'm such a scary cat. Don't, don't do that. You're a scary cat in this moment. Let it be okay. Just give yourself some time. Because energy is when you allow it to move through you, it will. Mm -hmm. If you judge, if you resist, then you keep it in. For me, praying to God also is very helpful for me to take away my fear and I leave it to God and ask God to help me. And then um, I feel more supportive uh, when I do that. That's very helpful for me. Okay, great. Yeah. That's a good way to do that too. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not mutually exclusive. You can, you can do both. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. Okay. So, um, I was going through some some things that is well, that's helpful to break you out of the the mode, or to to start stretching your um, opening you understanding of what reality actually is. So The Matrix, definitely a movie that I recommend. It's, it's a must. So um, definitely see it if you get a chance. And if, like, if enough of you are interested in seeing it, I would try to see if I can actually stream it. Um, just, we can, we can just set a time to to all see the movie together it's it's that movie actually talks about it's about the that we live in a constructed reality so the matrix definitely a good movie um um okay so Emilia Benz some of the people so these people, for me, they are really stretching my own um, <clears throat> my own mind as well. So Emilia Benz, especially she recently started recently as in I think this year I think she she started or maybe late last year she started a blog called Wu for Thought. So um, it's very interesting um, writing about the the collective that she came from. So um, Enelia Benz herself is Enelia Benz is the the person like the avatar or the 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 body, but her consciousness is actually I'm saying this. Actually, each one of our our consciousness is way bigger than what our body actually mm -hmm. represents. So the the person is in Amelia Benz, but her consciousness is is she talks about her consciousness um in Wu for thought. It's this Wu as in W O O Wu for thought dot com, I believe. 
and it's one one word wufa fofa thought. So um so she talks about how she like when she was young, like her she didn't even know how to see clearly. Her her eyes were, you know, her the, the senses for seeing was different from you know normal other normal child. That's why she always at when she was young, she has a tendency to trip over things because she couldn't see clearly. And then, you know, and later on, she finally figured out that, oh, um, she has to really see through her eyes. That mm -hmm. was when she, um, you know, started correcting how she was, a, she, she needs to see in order to be able to see the same things as everyone else. So she does not, uh, so she stopped um, tripping over herself. So it's, it's. So she talks about how she um, goes through the the from being a you know much bigger consciousness to fitting into this constructed reality that we have now. So really eye opening. I would. Could you either um, type it in or repeat it? What was it? Okay, sure, I would. Um, so it is. Thank you. Thought. Not thought. For thought. <laughs> so that's 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 what it is. Ooh, for thought. Mm -hmm. uh, that one. So she talks about that. And um Franco Franco mentioned like Franco De Nicola is the other one. Um Franco passed away already. Um Emilia Benz is still very much alive. So there's the, she has new things coming out fairly regularly and she's on um I think she's on YouTube. And she's on a couple of places. So, in, and um, Franco Di Nicola has put out a series of um, YouTube and the what's Franco's channel? Okay, I have to, I have to find it. And let you guys know and, and send it to you guys. So let me just check. Is all for thought? Oh, okay. Yep. That's the one. That's the one. Hmm. <clears throat> so when you so why do you why why do you why spend time um learning about these things? You know, learning about how a um, a non-physical being become physical and to in order to live in this reality construct is it's really to expand your mind so you understand that you know all the training that you have been that have been you know. <clears throat> kind of crammed into you right now and uh, the the person that you believe you are right now none of that is true none of that is true it's it's a creation it's your own creation and because you can create it you can also deconstruct it and then recreate yourself again so when you really understand that when you really grasp that reality is not what we think it is and then you know it will start to blow your mind bit by bit don't try to do it in you know one week and it may be rough because if you if your whole identity has been you know constructed around something and all of a sudden you try to knock that that um the ground that you've been standing on, it may not be, 
I would say very, very wise. So, you know, do it bit by bit if you're interested in, in this at all. I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just suggesting that if you're interested in recreating yourself and if you're interested in um, expanding your own limitation, then definitely go and um, look into these things. So that, you know, allow your own mind to be blown apart a bit by bit. And when you, when you really, and, and at some point you will grasp that, you know, it's not real. None of this is real. Your body, you can change it. You can shift it. Why? Because it actually is not real. It's a constructed reality. It's not real. It's, um... It's a, it's a put together. So reality is, it's not real reality. It's the constructed reality. So when you really understand that and lift that, you can create anything you want. And actually I want to um, put one more thing in is, uh, I actually just saw this video last night was talking this first this um this is on YouTube is archaic so I'm gonna spell it up for you guys so he is on YouTube and I think he has um he has a website that's by the same name only archaics.com so the one that I saw last night he was talking about um, the, the, the um, Silk Road and he's talking about the, the, the Wall of China. So um, the Wall of China is really, um, it's one of the seven wonders of the world. And, uh, and like the story that we've been told is that, okay, Chinese people, because they want to, um, be, like, they they make the this wall this great wall of China like really long I forgot thousands of miles long is really to um th this wall is how many 20 30 feet high so that you know when you're high above you can see when your enemies are coming at you and then you can defend your territory mm. from the this wall of China. He actually deconstructed it and saying that, you know, looking at the architecture, none of the other um, bridges, like it's, it's called a wall, but it's actually just a, a gigantic bridge. Like, uh, so it's, he was looking, comparing the architecture of the Great Wall of China with the architecture of the rest of China, like all, all the comparable, um, you know, Cons uh, the the comparable buildings of the same same kind, which is like a, a wall, uh, is is like a bridge that is a bit higher up. So that's and he was saying it's it's like if you just look at the architecture of it and the material that was used, most of the like none of the other Chinese um, buildings that was constructed at a comparable time, at that time, they don't actually use same material. So there is actually no, like if you look at it, if you really consider it and use your own logic, it's not real. Not real meaning that it's, it's not Chinese people who actually created that, that um, wall and the use of that wall was not actually to um, defend the country he was saying so like that that was like oh mind blown because <laughs> I've always thought oh the the wall of China yes the Chinese people build it and it's used to defend um, ch China but after I saw that video it was like uh, yep if, yep he he didn't just tell me something she he actually and the guy is called Jason Bashir. So he actually 
gave um, how he came to that logic. So all of that. So he actually, with evidence. So when you see something, the, the, the official version versus when you actually look at something from a logical, from your own mind and find the truth, it's different. So there's a lot of things. So, so how do you build your own confidence? We've been actually told a lot of things that are not true. That's why we have all these self-doubts because we, when we were young, especially when we were young, we actually, we have a knowing that is way beyond because we just came from, you know, we, we were just, when we were young, we still, like before the age of five, I said, we still actually have a lot of access of who we are beyond this con reality construct. We have a lot of access to who we truly are beyond, you know, this, this reality. However, at that time, our own inner knowing, because we see, like physically seem to see that the, you know, we are this, this tiny and then the grown-ups around us are much older and we get into the idea that, oh, they must know something that we don't. So we, like for the, a long time, we were conditioned to disregard our own inner knowing. And that's how we lost that confidence because I feel like I know that it is this, but everybody around me is saying it is that. So I'm going to trust that and, and let go of myself, like what my inner knowing says. That's how we got that programming of not trusting ourselves. So something to think about. It's part of building that inner trust is to start to know that um, this is a reality construct. Whatever it is that you hold as true, it will be true for you. It may not be for anyone else, but whatever you hold true, it will be true for you. It will act as though it was true. So out of the way to get back to have a better sense of um, you know, trusting ourselves and being able to build up that self-trust is to start to let go of trying to please someone else. It will be very scary at first. I'm on that journey. I'm not saying I'm done and I'm after that. I'm on that journey and I understand how scary that feels like at first. Mm. So you no, know, just own just know that yeah, it will feel scary and it's okay. Keep going. Keep checking in with your own inner knowing and honor that and really know that. Your truth is your truth. You don't have to agree with everyone else. Your truth is your truth. Even if it's not true for anyone else, if it's true for you, then trust yourself. Honor that. Um, <clears throat> I think that's all I want, I want to talk about tonight. Questions, comments? I'm wondering, you said that um, uh, it's not Chinese people who build this wall. Maybe <laughs> that days people were so spiritual that they could build something like this, the same like pyramids. You know, it's maybe that time people was more spiritual and they got knowledge from uh, different dimensions um he 
within that video, he, he talked about that too. <clears throat> so um, it's the Romans. So when he was looking at the architecture, how it was constructed is actually Romans. But the Romans actually um, supplied the architectural know-how and build it. They supply the architectural know-how and the Chinese people supply the um, you know manpower. So they, they actually have um, some archi uh, architectures and you know people that knows how to that have that already know how to build in that manner. And so this they send those people from, from the Roman Empire, send those people, and they train the Chinese. So that's interesting. Because when you look at the, the architecture of the wall of China and you look at what's being done in Roman, because um, the Romans are great builders. They are very organized and great builders. The, some of the roads that, like if you go to Italy, some of the roads they build at that time in the Roman times is still working. It is still functioning. Whereas, you know, look at some of the roads that we build now. In, like if you look at the highways, they're breaking down. <laughs> every every summer they have to patch it up because... Like after the winter time, then you know some part of it will be broken up. But if you look at the roads that were built by the Roman in the Roman times, they know how to build it. They don't have to, like they don't have to mend it. The roads, most of them, are still in good condition, working condition. So, the Romans are known for being, you know, really good at that. So. I think it applies to everything. I remember my parents, they used to have furniture for their entire life. And it furniture was okay. Nowadays, furniture broken in, in a year. It's already a piece of wood, you know. They used to have refrigerator. It used to work for 20, 20 years. Now, it works <laughs> a few years and done. Yep, now they are. <laughs> They're like Bobby furniture. <laughs> I know. Yes. So, any other questions or comments? So, I, I really encourage each of you to um, look into those materials to if you if it calls you to expand your horizon so that you like all of you can start to just do it bit by bit start to expand your mind when you expand your mind it can never go back to what it was before so it's a good thing and a bad thing if you have a, an investment on staying the same then stay away from those material just do everything as before but if you are interested in getting out of this um the loop if you are interested in getting out of the box then absolutely um for any earlier bands woo for thought Definitely very interesting. Like even, in, no, not even, but you know, her other things are very good as well. But the Wolf of Thought, I, I, for me, it really, you know, expand my understanding of the process. Because when I started coming to this, when I started to, you know, do all of these spiritual work, I was already fully programmed. So I have no idea. But because she, Anila Benz, was completely aware for the longest time when she got here. So she still remembers that. She remembered that process. So 
um, reading the process for her, um, it, my, pro, my own process of, you know, from being limitless to being Winnie that I am today may not be any resemblance, but, you know, there will be some overlapping. So it gives me some idea of what it takes to become who I am today. So I think that is that is an interesting knowing because we are going this, the opposite direction now. We're going from this, who we think we are today, to expand to becoming limitless again. So I thought it would be interesting to know where we came from so that we can go back there. And then our cakes. <laughs> our cakes. He has so many YouTubes. So, yeah. Warning is, he is um he he has read I don't know thousands of books to come up with what he came up with. I'm not saying that I agree with him a hundred percent, but. I agree with a lot of what he says. And he figured out that this is a construct and he has evidence. Like he would present his evidence that this is a construct. So um if you go to his YouTube, you know, look look at the the, the playlist and just find the playlist that interests you, if if it interests you at all. And so um, he he is uh, he is blowing my mind as well. Yeah. And if you are really really interested in doing healing work or quote unquote healing work or shifting patterns, as Richard Bartlett says, then definitely go to his website. He has. Um, I just finished one of his workshop, but I think um, every month or so, or like usually two, three months, at the very least, he would have something, he would have the next uh, workshop. So he is eye-opening at a very different level. And... I was going to add that in Hinduism, they said this world is an illusion. That's yep. what they're saying. Yep. It's not real. And, and yes, there's been um, ascended master who figured it out that this is not real. Right. Yep. So I, I knew it was not real. I just, you know, knowing, but... Cognitively, I cannot grasp it. And now mm. my cognition and my inner knowing have caught up to each other. Mm. That's because I, I, I keep exposing myself to things that this does not make sense. And I was um, like, and I was committed to my own spiritual journey to just um, not listen to, you know, the monkey mind that says this does not make sense. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and I allow myself to not believe in it, but still keep going. Right. And. Interesting. Yeah. Everything so if interesting. You, if you only, if you only go where it is that you feel comfortable, you will never shift. You mm -hmm. have to make yourself feel uncomfortable. That's a pattern break. Not not uncomfortable as in you know put yourself in danger, but uncomfortable mentally uncomfortable, and be okay with being uncomfortable. And when you do that, then um, yeah, your mind it's like a, you set up this this um, understanding with your mind. Oh, I know you don't like it. I know you don't accept it right now, but just consider it. Let's let it be in the energy field and see where it takes us. So I think that is the the, the commitment is to um, do it a little bit by a little bit, 
like ex expand a little bit. And when you really feel very uncomfortable and you're scared, then stop and be okay with that. And when you get really comfortable again, then expand it again. So, should you be interested to expand yourself and get back to being limitless? Then, yeah, those are the some of the resources that um, I have suggested. So, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. That was really good. Thank you. And I want to listen to Jason Estes about. Um, yeah. Dream killers. Yeah, dream killers. What was it? Dream. Dream kill killer. Oh yeah, yeah, that that one. Yes. Jason Estes. Um, yeah. About it's sabotage. It's yes. It's on um, like Jason Estes has a lot of different um videos as well, so he's another one that is. He is I like him very much because he 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 went completely opposite direction. Jason Brashear read you know thousands of books and he came up with that. Jason Estes does not read any book. He just meditates and all that he's known is from his own inner knowing. And he um, like he got something from his inner knowing, and then he actually lived that experience and learned from that. So that's how he did it. And I like very, very different approach. But I think they, they came to um, very similar understanding. So have fun, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank for you joining so me. Much. And we'll see you guys Sunday and we have the meditation. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.